episode of The Marketing Podcast is brought to you by Neighborhood Domains. Every business needs a domain name, including yours. Visit NeighborhoodDomains.com and use offer code MARKETING to get 10% off hosting. On this episode of The Marketing Podcast, we are talking once again about Facebook. There's a whole bunch of news that we want to dig into that will affect how you are marketing to people using the platform. Creativity Sells. Applying the right creative at the right time is the recipe for great marketing. The Marketing Podcast looks at marketing news and finds the secret ingredients that make great marketing. Hi, welcome to the Marketing Podcast. I'm Heather Watson. And I'm Brendan Quigley. How you doing, Brendan? Very good. And it happened. What happened? I finally got the privacy pop-up from Facebook <gasps> on my mobile phone. I don't even know if I've got mine yet. Have you not? I don't think so. Tell me about it. Okay, so uh, basically it forces you to review a whole bunch of security things. Uh, and a lot of them are like normal security things. But the one that I thought that was really interesting was the uh, facial recognition tracking. Um, so Facebook does the facial recognition thing. Google does it. Apple's been doing it for a long time. Like this is a normal thing. But in the, in the wording that they had, they were like, do you want to like turn off facial recognition? And they said, we use facial recognition to do things like prevent someone from stealing your picture and using it somewhere else on Facebook or to like tag you in pictures that you're not like someone doesn't tag you in. Like they they listed all these other features for why facial recognition might be beneficial to me without listing potential beneficials or benefits to them, which I thought was really interesting. Now, the nerd in me, I just said yes to everything. So bring it on. Oh, wow. I didn't turn anything off. That's awfully brave of you. Well, I mean, like we've been living in a world where that is the reality. And I feel like a majority of people are going to do that. Right. Interesting. So welcome into my life, Facebook. You've been here for a while. Welcome. If you notice anything before I do, let Let me me know. Let me know. Hit me up. You know how to get me. Well, it's funny you should, uh, the timeliness of that, because today's episode, once again, I feel like we have to do this once, once a (laughs) month, it seems. We have a big Facebook roundup. There's a lot of Facebook news to talk about. So our entire episode. I kind of like that, like the Facebook roundup. What did Facebook do this month? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's lots coming out of it. So we're going to talk about a bunch of the, uh, the fun things that have come up. And the first one is Facebook is demanding that advertisers have consent for email and phone oh. targeting. Okay. All right. You with me? Yeah. I thought you meant for their ads. I was like, what? I'm going to nope. consent to the ad. For email and phone targeting. So Facebook is hoping to avoid another privacy scandal by adding new accountability and transparency requirements for businesses, that's you listeners, that use its custom audiences to target you with ads based on email address and phone number. Starting July 2nd, very, very soon, advertisers will have to declare whether contact info uploaded for ad targeting was collected with proper user consent by them uh, one of their partners or both users will be able to see this info if they opt to block future ads from that business. Perfect. For the user. It's amazing. Yeah. But we're marketers. So that sucks. No, I, we make good ads. People don't want to block our ads. You're right. But that's the idea, right? Yep. Um, in the sense that, you know, uh, you're putting ads out now into a world where users are able to block you. You know, so if you want to make sure that your ad gets noticed and stands out, you better make good ads and, and don't be um, don't abuse the power that you that you have. I think this is excellent. Good job, Facebook. Good job, Facebook. A little proactive. Yeah. So what does this mean for businesses? No more list dumping. Yeah. Yeah. And don't be trying to like if someone unsubscribes from your list, don't be trying to like somehow recycle i am having an all-out war with microsoft right now on that very thing yeah. of all people who should know microsoft partners will not stop marketing to me after i've basically clicked every single button that says i don't want to hear from you anymore I th- I th- this is my last button please microsoft stop. yeah i think sometimes the, in certain situations for example banks you can get off all the lists, but they're still allowed to email you with like high priority things. Uh, and Microsoft Partners probably feels like they're high priority, which is likely what's going on with you. Um, but for businesses, like what this means for businesses is, is don't don't do this. Um, and there's a couple levels where you could get in trouble. 
And unfortunately, Facebook is level number one. Uh, they, they could kick you off their platform and then you don't get to use their platform for anything. We've had, we had to help a client who got booted out of Facebook advertising in a big way. Yeah. And it was accidental, albeit like it wasn't, you know, if you know how people, individuals get blocked from Facebook. But if you've got a business that's doing something and all of a sudden Facebook targets you and says you shouldn't be advertising because somebody's flagged your ads, it's a big, long fight to try and get it unblocked. We were able to help that client fix that situation because they were wrongly blocked. But you're talking to, you know, anonymous Facebook um, customer service people back and forth. It takes them days and days to seem to get any kind of response. And then it's like more days and days between responses. And yep. so you don't want to be blocked by Facebook, number yeah. one. Um, but secondly, you're right. You don't like if, if your customers are now have the ability to hide and then you, you're and know that they've blocked you. And then all of a sudden you're still promoting to them. That's just going to like make them feel. Yeah really negative towards your brand that's the harsh i can get like i feel like how i feel for microsoft right now yeah and and i feel like you know my rights my privacy as a consumer are being violated because i've already said no and you guys are disrespecting that that's a different level of trouble and it's funny i would say the second level then especially here in canada when it comes to emails is the can uh, the can spam laws and now with the gdpr in europe there's the regulations surrounding that um, so using your customer's data, uh, it's only going to get more important how you handle it. Um, so having that policy in place and uh, Facebook's just really helping you out here. Yeah. 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 So, so that's the first little piece of Facebook and good on them. These aren't all good news stories for Facebook, unfortunately. Of course. More would be the fun in that. <laughs> yeah. And, and this next one is one of those. So Facebook uh, has now confirmed they're pretty creepy. They um, are turning more into Big Brother every single day. And they've now admitted that they track users' mouse movements on screen in an effort to collect more data about that user. And this is coming out of India today last week, <laughs> um, last week's, uh, so really this, so India Today broke the news last week, but this is coming out of the 225-page um, admission document, which was following uh, Mark Zuckerberg's attendance at the U.S. Senate um, on, on the judiciary some time ago. So the company says that it tracks mouse movements to help its algorithms distinguish between humans and bots, but also to determine if the browser window that has Facebook loaded is in the foreground or in the background of a user's screen. And it doesn't end there, Brendan. Facebook also admitted to other device metrics it records about users. The social networking platform also admitted that it collects information about operating systems, hardware, software versions, battery levels, signal strength, available storage space, Bluetooth signals, file names and types, device IDs, browser and browser plugins. Um, from, from, sorry, that was from phones, uh, TV, and other connected devices. They've also admitted to collecting information about users reported gender, people users have removed from their friend list, and every ad the user has ever clicked on. Okay. Some of this, I do too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> what do you mean? So uh, the heat map thing with the tracking the cursor is, a, is a, something you can do for your website. Um, and the reason it matters is because we typically look at our cursor. So wherever the cursor is going is where the eyeballs are. So that's often used for like ad placement and content placement and that kind of stuff on websites. I actually haven't set that one up, but I know that that one's doable. I'm not too surprised that Facebook's doing that. Some of those other things, like operating system, screen size, those kinds of things, those are actually like default things that happen. Um, and these are on websites you're talking about, websites. just to be clear, like when yeah. you say, yeah, yeah, this isn't like just use a weird dark hobby. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> some, some of those things are default in something like Google Analytics, like a, like a, a basic free analytics package where you can collect the user data um, and use it to optimize your, your web app for a certain screen size and that kind of stuff. Um, some of the other things like browser plugins is definitely on the creepier side of tracking, but still doable. Um, but then you start getting into like battery life and file storage and, and names of and files, names of files that starts to get definitely creepier. But where this gets the most creepy and Apple 
just talked about this in their WWDC a couple of weeks back. Um, all of these little pieces of data can be brought together to create what they call a fingerprint. Um, and that fingerprint is you. Um, and it's really hard to not be identified by a handful of these pieces of data via this fingerprint. Um, and that's where the browser plugin comes into play and the screen resolution and the operating system and the, the time your phone is set to and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, funny that that this is all being admitted now because literally Apple just announced that Safari, by default, will anonymize all this data so you look like everybody else. So that fingerprinting capability uh, doesn't exist. Yes, but Apple still collects it just for the record. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a whole other episode. With that said, though, another show, yeah, actually. Apple would know their serial numbers of their devices. Yeah. It's because it's all through your Google or your Apple account. Your, your Apple, Apple account. And so this has prompted questions from Google, like like from people to Google, like, will Google do the same anonymizing? And like, I, me- I watched the Apple presentation, like they were really like kind of smirking when they brought up, we're going to anonymize your traffic. So websites like Facebook can't track right. your fingerprint. Also recognize that a lot of people who are accessing Facebook using a mobile device are using the Facebook app and then it's just game on. Well, not in Safari for iOS. Most people are just using the app and oh, it doesn't go app. through Safari, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, I think it's interesting because you're right. They are collecting all this data. They're not now, you know, making it as easy for advertisers to access this data necessarily. Like it doesn't necessarily help me as a marketer, as an advertiser to buy ads based on how much battery life somebody has. But it's when you combine all of these pieces along with your likes and what you're commenting on and what pages you're engaging with, like it's it's too much. And we all know, like, I mean, and, and even like as I'm reading this, it's like, well, yeah, obviously I know they're collecting everything. The question is, is this new news going to change user habits? Just like we saw after the Cambridge Analytica scandal broke months ago, people were like, hashtag delete Facebook. This piece is now... Um, this report is about a week old now, two weeks old. And, uh, you know, how are people consuming this and understanding this and responding to it? And that's where it really matters. Like, are they starting to really upset their user group, the millions of users, so that they'll start finding other places to go and engage with? Will they start putting in fake information? Because, like, the metrics, they don't want... I don't want somebody to know I'm 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 a female in my 40s. I'd rather people think that I'm a 18 year old male. And let's see what kind of advertising I get then. For example, right? So from a marketer's perspective, uh, we need to be really attuned to what users are doing in in the light of this knowledge. I think it's too soon to really gauge that right now. But uh, as this news continues to unfold, I think it's it's going to require us to take another look and have a whole other episode. Yeah. In another month. In another time. month, the Facebook wrap. Uh, I can only speak for myself, but no, I'm not going to, I'm not actually like, like I was fully aware of it before. I, I disagree though. Yes, you're aware. I know you're aware because it's in our place to be aware, but I also, you and I are friends on Facebook. Um, you're not a big Facebook user anyway. No. You're not prolific. There's no, a lot of, like, I mean like the. But I'm logged in. Joe user. Yeah, but I'm I'm logged in and it's still tracking all the websites I go to that have the Facebook pixel, that have the Facebook ad or a Facebook, you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. So so it's like I'm not going to change the way I'm interacting right now. And you're right. I'm not like I don't use Facebook all that much. Yeah. 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 Moving on to the next one, uh, all around advertisers. <laughs> Facebook is cracking down on sellers of junky products. They getting themselves in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. so they are getting tougher with businesses that advertise products that are unsac- sa- bleh, that are unsatisfactory or are, are not delivered on time. And this is coming into the Wall Street Journal. Hmm. So their new feature lets people leave reactions about their shopping experience after seeing an ad and making the purchase through the platform's mobile app or website. I've seen this before where, uh, you know, like a lot of those like crappy like wish.com kind of ads or T-shirts. And people will comment below saying, I ordered this. It was crappy fabric. It didn't show up on time. So a or review. Basically. A but, review. But now they're like, that was just in the comments of the ad. And yeah. if the advertiser takes the ad down, 
Ah, all then the, all, the all those comments disappear, disappear okay. right? Uh, so this is now, um, they're going to be warning businesses if they receive too many negative responses to address grievances or face restrictions on their ads. So again, this is, you don't want to be banned or blocked from Facebook if you're doing advertising. Um, so they'll start, and they already have started warning hundreds of e-commerce sites that received a high volume of negative feedback from shoppers who bought products after clicking on an ad. I feel like this is like the stereotypical drop shipping site that's just importing. And I feel like it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're also, this is a good thing though for any business, providing advice to businesses how to respond to negative feedback, telling them to provide more realistic information about shipping times or more transparent disclosures on return policies. Uh, and then they're going to be immediately banning businesses that are determined to, to be obvious scanners, which or scammers, pardon me, which makes sense. I yeah. mean, that's 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 obvious piece. I, I wonder if they're going to take their own training, responding to negative feedback. How, how to be more realistic and open yeah, and transparent exactly. about your products and <laughs> services. Because kind of, it's impossible <laughs> to contact them when you need them. Uh, yeah, completely. Oh. So uh, it is a bit of ironic after everybody has lost trust in them. But uh, they are, you know, people are buying from from Facebook. And I think it's their responsibility to make sure that the companies that are selling on Facebook are legit. Now, what I think is interesting is that Facebook does have the marketplace section now, which is classified ads. Uh, works quite well, but again, it's it's they don't do the transaction on Facebook. It still has to happen in person. I wonder if they're going to apply this to that section because mm -hmm. some people make, you know, I know here in Canada, Kijiji and Craigslist is in the major cities and that's big in the States too. People make their businesses off of selling on Craigslist and Kijiji. And now that Facebook has opened up Marketplace, you know, it'll be a little business. Uh, so I wonder if they're going to extend this crackdown to people who might be selling counterfeit goods say or or worse stolen mm -hmm, <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what i mean but are people going to be able to leave reviews on sellers mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, moving on to the last one on facebook if i may were you done on that point mm, yeah okay <laughs> i felt like i was done i'd moved on um, so this one actually kind of hooks back to the whole needing consent, like advertisers have to say that they have consent to use it. Um, part of that same announcement, um, starting July 2nd, uh, Facebook is going to be require requiring advertisers to tell if the user, if they're using data broker supplied information. Um, so earlier I was saying like no more list dumping, right? Like you can take your email and phone list and dump it into to, uh, Facebook and target advertising to that. You there's, have to say... There's like 10 people who were like, really, you can do that? And they've now gone to try to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do don't it. Don't do that. <laughs> um, so one of the pieces of new rules that's come out um, as of July 2nd is you have to say, yes, I have consent to use these things. The other piece is they're going to be... Um, making sure that it's not third party advertisers or third party data. So years and years ago, I used to work in this business that would buy leads um, and then telemarketers would just call those leads, right? For whether it be carpet cleaning or whatever. And what basically was happening is one company would go and set up a booth at a big trade show, like, you know, big, whatever the trade show was, the golf show, the RV show, the cottage show, the whatever, um, and say, hey, win a free prize. And then they would photocopy everybody's ballots with all of their personal information. This was, you know, pre-computer days kind of thing. Photocopy them all. And you would buy these ginormous sheets of leads. And it was just ballots, 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 ballots. There'd be like 50 ballots on a sheet. And you just cold call them all and say, hey, Brendan, great news. We saw you at the cottage show last weekend. We've drawn your name for a free Tupperware set. Come on up to our place. We're going to put you in a high pressure sales situation. You're going to really, really love it. And then walk away with your $3 Tupperware set. It's going to be awesome. Want to come? And I'm sitting here being like, I don't remember this business at the trade yeah, show. I only put my name in one ballot and that was to win a hot tub. Yeah. And how come I'm getting 75 phone calls? Yeah. You know, it was really skeezy. I don't, I, I don't think it was good. I used it as a testing ground for, you know, for copy writing really to find out what works and what doesn't and how to write a good hook. But Long and short of it is those are data brokers, right? Old school data brokers that are just, you know, gathering information and then turning around and reselling it. So advertisers can't be using that third party data um, as part of this. And 
I believe that as a business, you don't really want to be using this third party data. No. It doesn't really help you. You, you end up like it, it, it's you the would, coldest of the cold. Yeah. Of yeah. lead generation. You, you, it would be better if you went and found five good leads and built a relationship with five good leads and then made five sales than to call, you know, like then to purchase leads from yeah, somewhere else. It's spam, yeah. right? Like it's, it's really just a different version of spam. People who are casting that wide net. I'd like to think that most of our listeners are, are, are good businesses that are really trying to do good for their customers and deliver a quality product or service. And this is really just like the, the Viagra spam yeah. kind of email that you're getting just in a larger way. So um, Facebook, I should know, tried to ban brokers back in 2013 um, and had problems in doing so. Um, so this is their next kick at the can, of course, GDPR and all the sensitivities now, you know, five years later, hopefully they'll have a little bit more success in, in doing that, but, uh, they are, they're, they're making this change. So agencies will need to reconsider their approaches if they're using this type of marketing, but really don't use it. Yeah. And I, I, just to go back to the email list thing, like if you've got a really big old email list and you don't remember where you got their emails or whatever, like consider sending out an opt-in email and, and the email should be along the lines of, you know, we're never going to email you again unless you want to us to. Um, and that's not a bad way to like make that list usable. Speaking of privacy, I just think this is hilarious and very timely. And I was listening to you honestly, but I just got an inbox from, uh, Love it. from, uh, Microsoft from, partners. No, uh, <laughs> no, from a school board that's put out a, an, a request for proposal and they're looking for somebody, a, a firm, to do GDPR regulation impact assessment. And that's for a Canadian oh my school goodness. board um, that wants to find out what the impact of GDPR is on their school board. Slow clap. Can I slow clap? <laughs> I think that's really cool that they're proactive, but also a little late because it's like you probably should have started that a year ago. Yeah, exactly. Um, but hey, good on them to be recognizing that privacy at a school board. And, and it affects. Yeah, it does affect. You know, if you, if, you, if you one international student and suddenly you've got an issue if you don't have the right system in place in yeah. that in that environment. Yeah. So there you go. That's it. That's Facebook. All of that's Facebook. I'm gonna say skatebook. We should start that. Skatebook. I don't know what that is, but it sounds fast. And start up-y. Yeah. <laughs> um, for the Marketing Podcast, we really appreciate you listening to us. We are doing right now, we're in the middle of doing a listener survey. So we would love, love, love your feedback. Uh, get some thoughts of what you like about the podcast, what you don't like about the podcast, what you want to hear more of, what you want to hear less of. Please participate. I can't promise you uh, any you know, name will be entered into win a draw, but I can promise you that we won't sell your data. And we won't even send you emails unless you really, really want to hear from us. Um, but we would send you an email. Just email us. Acorn30.com slash podcast. That's where you go to. Acorn30.com slash podcast. <laughs> One more time. Acorn30.com slash podcast. Please come fill out our listener survey. And thank you all for listening for the Marketing Podcast. I'm Heather Watson. And I'm Brendan Quigley.